Hey guys, welcome to this video tutorial about 3ds Max. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about dummies. Uh, dummies are the equivalent of uh, null objects in After Effects, which basically means they have uh, no properties and you can hook anything on to them if you want. They don't render, they're really convenient at um, giving them properties which you don't want to get on your normal meshes. So let me give you an example. We got a teapot here. There we go. And we're going to go over to helpers and then over to dummies. And we're just going to make a dummy here. As you can see, it's totally see through and it's just a box. Now we're going to hook the teapot with the select and link tool onto the dummy. Now, if you select the dummy and we go to rotate, you can see we can rotate everything and it's going to use the x y and z uh, the pivot point of the dummy instead of the teapot so if we move the teapot and then we move the dummy you can see it's parent child relatable well that's easy but um what's also really handy is uh, sometimes i just want to have uh, an object like jiggle a little bit when you're moving a car or when you're um, want to have a plane get a certain property that it's uh, getting conflicted by the air you want to get a, a little jiggle but I also want it to be able to rotate position stuff like that so I want to have another object which has the jiggly property and then I want to have my normal object be able to animate okay let me show you what I mean in 3ds Max, when you go to Graph Editors, you go to Curve Editor. There we go. You have these options. Don't get scared by this. This is the most awesome tool in 3ds Max. Um, you can hook properties to any one of these items. So if we go to Position, let's let's just pick one position for the. Let's put pick the Z position. Right click and say assign controller now we get all these options you can sift through them if you like um, what they even done to uh, get reminded if you click on one and you think oh what's this gonna do and you think oh man which was the default one they put it here beneath though this is the BG float um, in the normal properties but now we're gonna wanna put a noise float in and what this does is it's created a random, well, they're not keyframes, but they're actually a fractal frequency, which you can use to, um, when we press play, you can see this. You can see that on the Z only on the Z-axis, because we selected the Z-axis here, it will cause to, um, well randomly go up and down and we c we can adjust the strength of this so if we double click and we will say f uh, strength uh, 10 you can see it goes up further if you want to set the frequency to 0 0.2 it goes a little smoother so it's really cool to have like a train or anything when you're when you have an interior of a train and you just want to get the jiggle of everything you can just get a dummy, hook everything onto the dummy and make a noise uh, controller. So this is just for up and down. If we go to the curve editor and um, we say, okay, this was the default was, sorry. Oh. That hangs on to me a bit, sorry. Let's see if I can reset this. Nope, no, it's all gone. Ah, here we go. Uh, curve Editor. Probably because I'm still playing. Curve Editor, uh, we right click on the Z axis, Assign Controller, which is now blue. And for the default, we will pick BJ Float. So now it's just normal keyframes. And we can also do this to the position. So that, will that means it will add noise to two, three different axes. So, axi, actually. So we go to Assign Controller, and we say noise position instead of noise float, noise position. And you can see we got three colors, we got three strengths. Uh, and if you see, 
you can see that the teapot's going all over the place. Okay, let's put the strength to two, just for... So, it's just jiggling a little bit. What I wanted to show you was that even though this is vibrating a lot, um, I can still animate uh, the position of this teapot. So, if I go forward, let's say I go forward 50 frames, you can see it's still jiggling the whole 50 frames. Now you might wonder, so what? I can just move the dummy if I want. Well, because you added an assigned controller, or you assigned a controller to the dummy, you can't actually move it anymore. So the position, the float thing, what we saw earlier, so if we go to right click, assign controller, and the default here is position XYZ, that actually allows you to uh, create the keyframes for the dummy. So now we can't anymore. So we have to animate something else. So what we can do is animate the teapot. What we also can do is make another dummy and select and link that dummy to the new dummy. So now I can animate this dummy. This dummy will cause the jiggling and the teapot will actually go forward. Well, I hope this makes any sense. Uh, I think the dummies are really interesting and a really good tool to use. I use them a lot for small little things, things I want to animate, things I want to jiggle. Um, they're also really good at just helping you say, okay, this is always the controller that is animated. So for in this case, uh, I would always animate the large dummy instead of the teapot because it's just easier to think when you get into a scene which you haven't used for a while, oh right, I always use the large dummies for animation. So I hope this helps in your new project and I will see you later with a new tutorial.